And now stay tuned for the program that has rated tops in popularity for a longer period of time than any other West Coast program in radio history. The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, His Own Reward. <laughs> It's a brilliant party, another social triumph for Peggy and Arnold. The salon orchestra, prominent men, glittering women, diplomats, officers in uniform, top-level government officials share the gay convivial atmosphere. Arnold, a leading figure in government circles, a distinguished host, stands with his wife Peggy as they talk to the guests, and Arnold gives no outward sign of the inner tension that twists within him. Yes, it is a delightful party. Thoroughly delightful. Oh, you're nice to say so, Mr. Thompson. <laughs> you're quite a catch, you know. Every capital hostess hopes to snare the chief government investigator for her party. Oh. <laughs> you see, Mr. Thompson, you've boosted my wife's stock as a hostess at least 100%. Oh. <laughs> oh, believe me, Arnold. It's my pleasure. Oh, excuse me, will you? I think I see a late arrival. Yes, go right ahead. Of course, Peggy. Uh, she's an amazing woman, Mr. Thompson. Parties are her life's blood. <laughs> And she should be thriving. And I'll soon be insolvent. Uh, how are things going with you since your recent exoneration? I'd prefer not to discuss the investigation. It's over and done with. And fortunately, you were exonerated. But uh, what I ask you is, how have things been going since then? Since then, Mr. Thompson, my position has been status quo. I have remained in the same job while two subordinates have been promoted to positions which would have meant a great deal to me. Well, perhaps there are reasons for their appointments, Arnold. Reasons you know nothing about. Nonsense. If I had it to do over again... You'd do exactly as you're doing. No, I wouldn't. Why should I sacrifice... In times like these, Arnold, everyone must sacrifice. Oh, times like these. I'm tired of that phrase. Well, I... I had no idea you felt as keenly as you do. Well, it's just that... Oh, everything seems to have gone wrong lately. I... Didn't really mean to take it out on you, Mr. Thompson. You know how it is. Oh, excuse me, dear, but there's a gentleman waiting to see you in the study. A gentleman? Who? I really don't know, dear, but he did say it was important. Try not to be long, dear. Friends art's due to play any moment now. Friends art? He's the musician I told you about. Oh, yes, of course. Excuse me, Mr. Thompson. Of course, Arnold. Oh, it's you, George. Is it your habit to appear at private parties uninvited? Hardly. But you're becoming rather difficult to see these days, Arnold, especially where your creditors are concerned. I'll talk with you tomorrow. You'll talk with me tonight. But that's impossible, George. My guests... Are very important people, I'm sure. That's why I suggested we talk in private. You'd feel rather badly if any of them happened to overhear us. What's so important that it can't wait till tomorrow? These IOUs. I told you I'd pay you next month. That was last month. You've been telling me that for a long time. I want the money now, before your other creditors move in. Listen to me, George. In a few weeks, I'll have enough to pay every dollar I owe and a great deal more. You've said that before. But I've been planning this deal for weeks. I'm so certain of it that... Well, suppose I give you part of what I owe you right now and the rest when I complete the deal. Well, I suppose a part of a loaf is better than none. But I expect the remainder within 30 days. You'll have it. <laughs> Your words to George were not idle ones, were they, Arnold? You do have plans, real plans. They involve risk, terrible risk. But you decide the rewards are worth it. You remember one man who told you he had connections which could solve your problems for you, if you met the terms. Risky terms, Arnold. But you find yourself thinking of them during the remainder of the evening at the party. And as the evening wears on, you become increasingly aware of Thompson, the government investigator's presence. 
He disturbs you, doesn't he, Arnold? But finally, the party is over. The guests have gone. And you and Peggy are alone. <sighs> it was a good party, wasn't it, dear? Yes, expensive, too, but everybody seemed to enjoy himself. Except the host. Oh, goodness, I almost forgot. Friends are waiting in your study. Who? The musician, darling. I'm afraid he's waiting to be paid. Must he be paid tonight? Well, he did seem quite anxious. Oh, all right, dear. I'll see him right now. Don't be long. I won't, Peggy. Uh, good evening, sir. Your friends are, I believe? Yes. Yes, I am. About your fee, I, uh, I'd prefer to reimburse you later, if you don't mind, when uh, all the bills for the party come in. More business-like that way, you know. You are perhaps short of fun. Now, see here, I won't oh, stand... Oh, forgive me, sir. Perhaps it will not be necessary to pay me any fee at all. What? You see, I have the receipt all ready for you. I don't understand. Oh, you will understand, sir. This evening has been my pleasure. Uh, you will please accept this receipt. And I bid you good night, sir. If you are interested in talking with someone who appreciates and admires your ability and is willing to reward you handsomely to secure it, meet me at the Blue Lantern tomorrow night at 11. Ask for... John. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Engine wear, it's one of the principal reasons drivers have to spend big sums of money having their motors overhauled. Engine wear, it's one of the principal reasons motors lose pep and power, get fewer miles per gallon of gas. Engine wear, it's one of the principal reasons cars gradually use more and more oil until eventually they become oil eaters. No wonder automotive and petroleum engineers for years have sought ways to reduce engine wear. And now at last, Signal reports startling success with an amazing new motor oil that reduces by 50% engine wear due to lubrication. That means your car can now keep its light new pep and power twice as long. It means you can now enjoy low oil consumption twice as long if your car isn't already an oil eater. So if you want to be good to your car and your pocketbook too, drain out that lazy old motor oil. Have a Signal dealer refill your crankcase this week with Signal Premium, the amazing new Signal oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication, 50%. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. The note the musician Frenzard handed you as he left your party dovetails with previous suggestions which you've been considering, doesn't it? And you're interested in talking to anyone who appreciates and admires your ability and is willing to reward you handsomely to secure it. Yes, for the moment at least, you forget your frustrated ambitions, your heavy indebtedness. For the man you're on your way to meet holds out the promise of solving both these problems for you. At 11 o'clock the following night, you enter the Blue Lantern Inn to keep your appointment. Help you, mister? Why, yes. I'm looking for John. Oh, sure. Up those stairs. First door to the right. Thank you. Who is it? John. Very prompt. Will you come in, please? You? Friends are... your John. Names are not important. You may call me John. Uh, please sit down. You are the one who wrote me the note? Admiring your qualities and ability. Indeed, I am Arnold. I've heard a great deal about you from one of my associates. 
so? Yes, I have watched you for some time. I recognize your brilliance, your ability. Yes, even your ambition. That is good. You're just the man we are looking for. Go on, John. It has distressed me to see such brilliance wasted, your ability bypassed. I have seen your frustration grow. I'm not sure I understand. You, Arnold, and people like you are on the wrong side of the fence. The position of your government is ill-advised. No wonder you find it impossible to adjust yourself. You belong with us. Most Americans honestly believe in what they're fighting for. Perhaps they do. But others, even friends of yours, realize the folly of the American position. I know. They've spoken to me about it. These people are sure that your side cannot win. This ideal, this freedom you are fighting for is just a mirage. All the bloodshed, the suffering will have been for nothing. Why are you so sure of this? Because our manpower is unlimited. Yours is limited. And in the final analysis, our power will be the deciding factor. Hmm. Perhaps you're right. Oh, believe me, Arnold, I am right. You're too brilliant a man to waste your efforts on a losing cause that has already cost thousands of young lives. By working with us, you can help bring this unrest to an end, a sure peace for generations to come. And above all, your efforts will be appreciated and handsomely rewarded. That'll be a new experience at any rate, and a pleasant one. <laughs> As I have pointed out, your government has shown how little they appreciate you. Uh, John, in your note, you mentioned that you would be willing to... To reward you handsomely. For one thing, I am prepared to pay you a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand? And what do you expect of me? We are interested in that installation north of New York. But what can I do about that? Oh, nothing. Until you become head of this installation... You have already applied for the position, I believe. Yes, yes, I have. I've contacted everyone I know who might be able to help me get it, but so far I've heard nothing. Obviously, I cannot help you. You must get that appointment any way you can. And if I shouldn't get it? Then I'm afraid we cannot do business. I see. <laughs> but surely a man with your contacts can arrange this. I will keep in touch with you, Arnold. You redouble your efforts, don't you, Arnold? Write more letters, see more people, in a supreme effort to get that all-important appointment as head of the installation above New York. John's evaluation of you, your brilliance, perception, and ability, spurs you on and conjures up bright dreams of position, power, and recognition. But the days go by and there is no word of your appointment. Only occasional notes from John. Carefully worded reminders that you must get it. One afternoon, after another fruitless effort, you return home. Is that you, Arnold? <sighs> yes, Peggy. Oh, if you'd have arrived just five minutes earlier, you could have helped me entertain a caller. Really? Sorry, dear, I was held up. Oh, you look tired, darling. Let's go in the study and sit down. All right. Mr. Thompson said to tell you hello. He said... Thompson. He was here. Oh, yes, I told you we had a caller. Don't you like Mr. Thompson, Arnold? You always react to him so strangely. What did he want? <laughs> to visit, I guess. Heaven knows we chatted our heads off. What about? Oh, just friends, acquaintances in the government, that sort of thing. Oh, he left a note for you. A note? Where? On the writing desk. What did he say? Well, it... Just says, sorry to have missed you. I told you it was nothing important. Peggy, did he write the note here at the desk? Well, yes, he did. Why? Did he go through my papers? Arnold, what on earth are you driving at? Did he go through my papers here in the desk? I really have no idea. I was called to the door when he sat down to write the note. And he'd finished when I came back. <laughs> As Peggy leaves the room, you begin a frantic search through your papers in the desk. You must know if Thompson has discovered anything incriminating against you. The several notes from John are there, apparently undisturbed. But you can't be sure, can you, Arnold? 
You're frightened, aren't you, Arnold? Desperately frightened. And then... Arnold! Arnold, he's here. Who's here? The man you waited for, darling. The man in government you said would decide whether or not you got that appointment. Oh, no. Peggy, wait. I can't wait. I'm sending him right in. It's happened, hasn't it, Arnold? You're certain now that Thompson was checking on you, that he's found you out and turned in his report. But you're trapped now, aren't you? Yes, you want to run anywhere, but there isn't time. Suddenly, your fear solidifies in cold, brazen bravado, and you know you'll have to bluff it through. I must say, uh, you've been hard to catch up with. I'm sorry, sir. I... Won't you sit down? Thanks, but my business with you was brief. I see. Arnold, I'm pleased to tell you that the appointment is yours. My heartiest congratulations. I... The appointment? Yes. One of the most important of our time. That installation above New York is our most vital project. Yes, so I understand. This new appointment places immense power and responsibility for our future security in your hands. If you only knew what this means to me, sir. Just do the job you're capable of and you'll never be forgotten. You're stunned with surprise, aren't you, Arnold? You can hardly believe the appointment is yours. Events move quickly now. You're soon established in your new office in complete control of that important installation, just the way you've planned. And as soon as it seems safe, you arrange to meet again with John at a secluded spot in the country. You are to be congratulated, Arnold. You are now in a position to accomplish our purposes. I am also in a position to lose everything. And I have more to lose than I had the last time we talked. Yet you got in touch with me. I must presume that our offer still interests you. Position, money. You will go much farther with us. Suppose something goes wrong. Nothing will go wrong. You might be caught. And if information about the installations were found on you, I would be suspected too. Suppose you are. By the time it is discovered, you will have changed your address. Arrangements have already been made for your transfer once your end of the deal is completed. And the money? When am I to be paid? $50,000 when you give me information that will enable my men to get inside the place. You'll get the remainder when the final step succeeds. You have the money with you? 50000 yes. Now, just how do you plan to get our men inside the installation? Easily. I'll show you. Here. You see, by simply transferring some men from... You've made your choice, haven't you, Arnold? Now you will have money, power, and recognition. All the things you've schemed for. After your interview with the all-powerful John, you return to your office, confident, complacent. Sitting at your desk, you are totally unaware of an event that takes place only a few miles away. An event that will reshape your entire life. Just a moment, you. Halt! Halt or I'll shoot! <laughs> Somewhere. We'll find him. Yeah. Come on. Yes? You didn't think you could give us the slip, did you? I wasn't trying to. Then why'd you run? I wasn't certain who you were. You mean you were certain. Give me that briefcase. Take off your coat. Now your shoes. Hey, never mind the shoes, Dave. Hmm? Look what's in his briefcase. Where'd you get these papers? Oh, please, gentlemen, you don't expect me to divulge. These plans could have come from only one of two or three sources. Is that so? Yeah, only two or three people could have got a hold of these. Uh, you seem to have the answer. You're under arrest. We'll soon make sure who's selling us out. Yes, Arnold. Had you known that the man who provided you with $50,000, who promised so much in the future, had been captured and tacitly admitted his connection with you. You'd have been in a far different mood, wouldn't you? It's nearly midnight when you learn that he who deals in betrayal is quite apt to be betrayed. Excuse me, sir. I hate to disturb you, but this is important. Yes, what is it? It's rumor, but there seems to be weight behind it. I understand we've captured a spy. A spy? When? Just a little while ago, as I understand it. Somewhere out in the country. Anyone with him? No, he was alone, allegedly carrying the complete plans of this installation. I see. 
Um, where is he now? In custody. I'll get the full details to you as soon as possible. Yes, yes, do that. It's a real break for us, capturing him. Isn't it? Yes, of course it is. Uh, a great break. Fear, panic explodes inside of you, doesn't it, Arnold? If it's true, if John has been captured, then all your scheming and plotting may have been in vain. You realize you must move and move fast. You need time as you've never needed it before. You rush home. What's the matter, dear? Peggy, we've got to get out of here. What do you mean? Get your coat. We've got to hurry. What have you done? Look, Peggy, there isn't time. Now, we can talk later, but what I did, I did for you as well as myself. Now, we'll have money, power, position, Peggy, everything we've wanted. And just where will we go, Arnold, and how? It's all arranged, Peggy. We're leaving the country. I wonder who that is. You'll have to answer it. No, wait. Yes, I guess you're right. I'll get it. I knew you'd want this right away, sir. Oh, of course. Come in. I've got confirmation that the spy's been captured. I thought you'd want to go down and question the per prisoner personally. I think I shall. Yes, I think I shall. Uh, that'll be all. Yes, sir. Peggy. Peggy, do you know what this means? We can make it now. We can escape. <laughs> They'll do nothing for several hours. By the time they begin to wonder what's delayed me, we'll be far away. Peggy will be set for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Is engine wear causing your expensive motor to wear out twice as fast as necessary? It is if you're still using lazy motor oils that merely lubricate. Here's what I mean. In amazing new Signal Premium motor oil, special properties are engineered into the oil through the marvels of modern chemistry. As a result, new Signal Premium not only reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%, but also protects your motor in all these important extra ways. One, keeps oil rings clean and free. Two, controls and reduces harmful engine deposits, such as carbon, gum, and varnish. Three, prevents sticking of hydraulic valve lifters. Four, stops acid corrosion and rust. Best of all, new Signal Premium Motor Oil gives you all this extra protection at no increase in price. Good reason to get your next oil change at a Signal service station. Change this week to the amazing new signal oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 50%. Engine wear, engine wear, engine wear. Yes, Arnold, as you promised Peggy, things went smoothly. And as John had promised you, your escape from America was accomplished with amazing ease. In new places, among new faces, you lose track of time. Power, money, all the things you thought would satisfy you come your way. Then in the midst of your new surroundings, the decay slowly sets in. You and Peggy are not accepted by your new associate. It's not what you anticipated, is it, Arnold? Weeks and months pass in loneliness, heartache, and despair. Then one evening, sitting alone with Peggy, an idea hits you. One of Peggy's famous parties will again provide the solution to your problems. Yes, you're certain you can count on Peggy, aren't you? You make the plan, send out the invitation, spare no expense. On the night of the party, you stand in the reception hall, listening to the final strains of a carefully chosen musical number, executed by the famous orchestra you engaged for the evening. Uh, do you wish us to play any longer? No. I'm sure there will be no further occasion for music. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we will be glad... No. You may consider yourselves dismissed. There are no further charges. No, sir. You gave me the fee when we arrived. I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Good night. Uh, good night. What went wrong, dear? Nothing, Peggy. It just 
happened, that's all. I planned the party so carefully. Every tiny detail... It wasn't your fault. Everything was perfect. But... But no one came. No. No one. What are we going to do? I don't know. It's horrible. No matter where I go, what I do, people look at me as much as to say, traitor, it isn't fair. Isn't it? No. Well, I suppose it is. But it's getting worse and worse. I can't sleep at night. All I can hear is... Traitor. Sometimes when you look at me, I can even hear you saying it within yourself. Traitor. I can't stand it. As long as I live, I'll hear it. Traitor. 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 I can't stand it, Peggy. I can't stand it. Traitor. Traitor. Many of you have undoubtedly recognized tonight's Whistler story was based on the events in the life of America's arch-traitor, Benedict Arnold. The Signal Oil Company invites your comment on tonight's program. In presenting this fictional dramatization, it has been our hope that we may have helped to underline the dangers in the many isms being offered today. Isms which make their appeal to well-meaning but misguided people, and which have as their real purpose the undermining of the way of life which has built America into the greatest nation on earth. Firmly with faith in the right, here will we stand, God our only confessor, here on the shore that to freedom were born. America, 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 live on. Here on the shores that to Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned to Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 